Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Emily. Emily and I are here today to talk about the Women's Nordica Unleashed 98. Um, this is the first year for the Unleashed 98. Obviously, if you watch our channel, you saw a good amount of content on it last season. Um, we were able to get on it kind of mid-season last year and, and did quite a bit of testing on it, but much more on the men's side. Um, you may know that I own a pair, really enjoy them. They work really, really well for how I like to ski. And really the same story over here on the women's side. And I suppose before we get into it, this is the 2023 graphic. Um, nice to be able to mention that for 2024, the ski doesn't change. It does get a little bit of a graphic update, but still going to be the same performance. So this, what we talk about today, this review will still be relevant at least for the following season, mm -hmm. which I think is always nice. Yes. Um, and here's the ski right here. I actually think the women's, women's ski, even though they're very, very similar, there's only really a, a slight difference in core thickness. I think the women's ski gets a better graphic. Absolutely. I'm a little jealous. Very beautiful, eye-catching graphics. Yeah, Love kind of it. from the moment I saw them last yeah. year, I was like, I want the tree one. Oh. So, a <laughs> little jealous. Um, but the rest of the story is basically the same. So we get a performance wood core in these skis. We get carbon and fiberglass kind of stringers. Pretty classic construction there, just longitudinal stringers down the middle of the ski. What I think is really cool about this ski, and again, this is a conversation that we've had quite a few times before at this point, they basically borrowed the metal application from Santa Ana skis for these Unleashed. So both on the men and on the women's side. So what that means is we get full width metal in the tips and tails, tapers to kind of a thinner strip through like the mid sections of mm -hmm. the tip and tail of the ski. And then it's again kind of wider underfoot, so you've got a little bit more of a platform to stand on. But I think it's a really cool way to put metal into a ski. Really curious to hear Emily's thoughts on it. Um, and then from a shaping perspective, I think it's important to remember that these skis replaced the Soul Riders from Nordica. So that was like a true dedicated twin tip, really more of a park ski than anything else, but it was a great all mountain park ski. So this is still 100% a twin tip. Um, I will say that it is a little bit more directional, uh, directional, excuse me, or at least I think it skis a little more directional than the outgoing Soul Riders, but definitely a twin tip. Mm -hmm. um, there is quite a bit of camber in this ski. I think that's really important to its feel and overall performance. And it's actually not like a crazy amount of rocker. No. It's mostly camber and then you just get that like really abrupt kind of twin tippy splay. And there's also not much early taper in this ski either. Kind of like borrowed from the Enforcer Santa Ana taper shaping, which means that you get pretty consistent edge contact. You know, it's not like the ski, ski is short. Mm -hmm. So that's it. That's my recap of construction and shape. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> Um, Emily, what do you think? Um, well, I was first off, I was really excited to, to ski these for multiple reasons, but I remember talking to you about it in one of the ski comparison videos and how you really liked these skis for how you like to ski. Yep. And I know you like to ski switch and you like to ski park yep. and just kind of the whole mountain and have, you know, the ability to ski, you know, transition from the park onto groomers and just kind of everything in between. So I like to ski similarly, and so I was excited to try them out and see how see how I would like them because I, I do really enjoy a twin tip ski, but it's probably my first twin tip ski with metal in it. So, there aren't too many of them. Yeah, so yep. this ski is kind of in its own little realm, and you know I was in incredibly impressed because I really like to have the option to ski switch. I am like a free ride park skier, so I like to, you know, just have the option of, of skiing everything and having one ski for that is huge. Um, and then to have, you know, the shape and profile, the twin tip design is awesome and then it has metal in it, so it's really strong, it's really powerful, just really versatile. Um, so we were skiing a little bit of everything, but um, a lot of spruce, a lot of like, yep. you know, groomer skiing the day that I was on them. And I just, you know, found them to be really stable, really powerful, but also really playful, which 
all of those attributes in one ski, I'm a huge fan of. Um, and then, you know, 98 underfoot, that's kind of a, a wider, you know, wider ski for some people, but it's kind of the, I don't know, it's an ideal width for all mountain skiing um, for, for myself and I know a lot of other people too. Um, so just a really fun loving but powerful twin tip ski for me is awesome. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's really important to bring up about the width. That is a little bit wider than mm -hmm. what at least some people would choose and, and a lot of people for that matter for like a daily driver ski. So I think if you're if you're on the east and you're kind of choosing it as a daily driver, you would want to have a, a skiing style s similar to Emily or, mm -hmm. or kind of like demands that are similar to yeah. yours. I feel like out west, that's a totally different story where like it's got daily driver written all over totally. it. Totally, yeah. But I mean, if you want a twin tip ski for skiing switch, skiing park, or you just want, you know, a fun, easy release from the tail, like bump tree ski. Um, just there's a lot you can do with the ski. Um, and, you know, I found that when I took those few runs on them and, and then obviously just how powerful they are, but not fatiguing or incredibly demanding. And I think that, you know, speaks to the construction and just the, the carbon added to it, and not just two sheets of metal and wood. You know, I think it was yep. just um, intentional for that reason because they still do feel really maneuverable and energetic and you don't feel weighed down or like they're you know just super heavy or demanding that's good to hear because i mean with the metal in them they are certainly not the lightest skis no. in the world um and you know metal construction it's not like a tremendously soft flexing ski there's there's a bit of stiffness to it mm -hmm. so you didn't necessarily feel locked into a turn or like you had to work too hard kind of flicking no, the ski around? I didn't, but I mean, once I started to, you know, get on steeper terrain and started to kind of make turns on the fall, I mean, they definitely take a level of skill to, to turn and maneuver them. So they're definitely, I wouldn't say they're for a beginner to intermediate. I mean, yep. they're definitely more for advanced expert skiers, but that said, there's you know, more demanding skis out there, there's more forgiving skis out there, but it's just this nice blend that I found. Yeah. No, it's an interesting, yeah, it's good. I think they, they hit, they hit a really nice balance yes. with this ski, and that's something that I really enjoy about it as well, yep. is you can push pretty hard against it, but because it is a twin tip, you know, it's not like you're fighting a flat tail right. if you're trying to get it to release and, and skid. Yep. And I think a lot of the time with, with skis like this, like I know I like to ski this way when I get on these and I get the impression that you do too mm -hmm. is you let let your let them go. Mm -hmm. Like you, you let the skis run a little bit and when you do that, you need the ability to like really throw them sideways. Yes. And then it sounds like you, you, you agree with me that yep. that's not too challenging. Right. Um, but no, I'm, I'm glad you pointed out beginner intermediate application because it, mm. it doesn't feel like the right match. Right. Like there is a world of lighter, softer twin tips out there that exactly. would be better for beginner intermediate skiers. Yep. I think especially lighter weight women like yeah, yourself, like totally. when you get on this, like it's, there's kind of a lot of ski here. Yes. You know, similar construction to a Santa Ana, which we've talked about. They're they're pretty strong, mm -hmm. capable skis. But there's even like kind of more camber in these, at yep. least in like if you look at the tip profile. Right. Um, obviously, like Santa Anas have flatter tails. So there is, yeah, there is some substance here for yes. sure. Yep. But also they found a really nice, like we keep saying, balance between stability and edge grip and power and also playfulness and maneuverability. I mean, yep. I just, like I took them from, you know, ripping really strong, fast turns and ended up going into some bumps. And yeah. I was really curious how they would be in bumps given how powerful they felt. And all of a sudden I'm able to, you know, quickly get through bumps and, and ski with, you know, that playfulness and agility. And so that is just, is really awesome. It makes them really versatile and that's, Sweet. Hard to find in one ski, like all of that combined. Yeah, um, I was pretty impressed um, filming you through those bumps. Yeah. Because I didn't really know what was going to happen there either. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, you're like a smaller skier. And yeah. And like it's a lot of ski sort mm -hmm. of. And I, 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 I remember you 
entering that <laughs> section of bumps and I was kind of thinking like, let's see what oh, happens. <laughs> it's going to happen here. Yeah. And, and yeah, that you made them look super agile and yeah. quick, which was sweet. Yeah, they're really fun. I'm really impressed with them. Um, unfortunately, we're still kind of waiting for a, a maybe our, I guess our second powder day here in Vermont. We have not <laughs> had much fresh snow. So Emily, you haven't skied these in like deeper fresh snow. I have not yet. Um, Allie did last season. Allie got a, a awesome opportunity to ski these in some softer snow. So I'll speak for her, I suppose. Yeah. Um, she loved them. And I think that's like performance that carries over from Enforcers and Santa Ana's is this like kind of smooth taper shape makes them very predictable yep. in softer snow. I will say the one thing that both Allie and myself found is if you compare it to the Santa Ana 104 free or the Enforcer 104 free, it's not as surfy because yeah. that ski has longer but lower splay. Mm -hmm. So it gets more of that kind of like surfy smeary yep. feel. These definitely don't feel catchy, but they feel a little bit more bouncy to me when you get in soft snow. Yep. Yeah. And just the, the placement of the metal too, just, um, I, I really love how they, they chose to do that. And I think that speaks to what you just said is like yeah. why they feel that way. It's pretty cool how Nordica put this metal in. And at least for me, I got to experience it much more with these cause I haven't skied Santa Ana's very much. I like the concept of having a lot of metal in the tip yep. so that when you hit something with the front of your ski, it doesn't like, it doesn't throw get deflected yeah. or, or get, or throw you around, but then they're still taking the necessary weight out right here. Exactly. So it reduces that swing weight just yep. a little bit. So yeah, I think the application of metal is, is really cool and not to speak for Emily, but at least on the men's side, I'm super happy that we get Unleashed skis back mm -hmm. for another season, unchanged. And I would imagine we, we likely will for another season because they're still a very fresh thing. I don't know these things for sure, yeah. but still pretty fresh skis. And I think there's a an audience out there that will gravitate to these skis just because of the twin tip design and the the power that they have. I mean... I know you and I have talked about that, but I've myself talked to friends and people that are just curious about what skis to get for themselves. And there are, you know, free ride park skiers uh, that are looking for this exact type of ski, just yeah. a, a twin tip ski, but one that is powerful and strong and right. has metal in it and can carve really well and that you can really drive. So, yeah, I think the demand for twin tips with metal is growing and growing. Totally which is fun. Yeah. And I, I like to think that I'm part of that yeah. <laughs> driving force Absolutely. and like you are too, you yeah. know, we're both ex park skiers or mm -hmm. not ex park skiers, but park skiers in our thirties. Yep. And like, that's really what, like a perfect way to think about this. Ski exactly. Park skier in your thirties. Yep. So that's it. Emily, anything you want to add? Just excited to ski them in softer snow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, I mean, I put them to the test in a lot of ways and yep. was really impressed with each one, but I look forward to, to getting in some soft snow and um, just see how they do with that. But totally. I'm if we sure get the I'll opportunity, be... we'll uh, we'll get your thoughts yeah. on the chairlift or something like that. Absolutely. So that's it. That's the Nordica Unleashed 98W 2023 graphic here. Like I mentioned, does not change for 2024. Um, let us know if you have any questions. As always, uh, if it's a women's specific question, which I would hope they are on this mm -hmm. on this video, then I will relay those directly to Emily so you're not just hearing from Bob or myself. Um, and yeah, this was a lot of fun. Yes. So yes. let us know if you have any questions and we'll talk to you soon. See ya.